Hello and welcome to another video. In this video, we're going to be working on maximum size of a set after removals, which is the third problem from Weekly Contest 379. And I think it's actually pretty easy once you kind of understand what you need to be doing. So let's go over it. So you're given a zero index integer array num1 and num2 of even length n. You must remove n over two elements from nums1 and n over two elements from nums2. After the removals, you insert the remaining elements of nums1 and nums2 into set s. Return the maximum possible size of set S. So in this first example, essentially what you can do, one of the things you can do is you can remove all the ones from the first side and all, or and two of the ones from the second side, right? So we can just remove this and we can remove something like this. Then we will basically put in these into our set. So our set will be one, two. And in the second example, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. And in the second one, we have twos and threes. So basically what we want to do here is in the second one, we want to keep some numbers. So like I said, because it's a set, like duplicate numbers obviously aren't going to be needed. So like, you know, you can get rid of these, for example. So, I mean, you, you, you need to get rid of half. So you can get rid of something like this, but getting rid of like having this extra two won't do anything once you combine these. So it doesn't really matter, but whatever. So in this case, you can keep something like this. And in this one, you're going to want to keep everything that's not in here. And then if you have to remove more, then you'll remove more, right? So because twos and threes are already in here and we're going to combine them, we don't need them in both. So we're going to get rid of two, three, and then we need to get rid of one more element. So it doesn't really matter now which one to get rid of. Let's say we get rid of this one. So basically our set will be two, three, four, five, six, and that will be five elements. And there's a bunch of other ways you can do it. Instead of getting rid of the one, you can get rid of any one of these. But the most you can have is five. Then in the last example, once again, ideally you want to get rid of duplicates first. So they kind of show you this. So you, let's say you get rid of something like this and this, then you'll have three in each. So you'll have one, two, three, four, five, six, which will be six. So the main thing to this problem is to figure out like this concept, right? So you're going to have two, two arrays of nums and you will have in one of them items that are, are unique to this one. And here you'll have items that are unique to this one. And then you'll have a bunch of items that are in common. So obviously the first thing we want to get rid of, okay, I don't know about that. Okay, there we go. So the first thing we want to get rid of is get rid of duplicates, right? And that's pretty easy. So let's just go back to our example of like this one. So let's say we have, we'll have two arrays like this. Let's just use some example. Like we have an array here. And we have an array here. And let's say one array has like a bunch of duplicates. So let's say it has like two, three, two, three, two, three, two, three, let's say, and then it'll maybe like four or five. And then the other one will just have like a bunch of different numbers. So let's just say it'll have like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So the first thing obviously we want to do is just get rid of all the duplicates. So if we get rid of duplicates here, there are no duplicates and here there are, and we want these to be of length five at the end, right? So we can take this, we can get rid of all duplicates. So we can get rid of like this, 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 this. And now we basically condense this down into two, three, four, five, because we know duplicates don't really matter. So let's just do that. Do something like this. So now we condense that down into two, three, four, five. Okay, and this is also condensed. So essentially, basically what we need, to, what we can easily do is just turn nums1 and nums2 into sets, right? That'll get rid of the duplicates. So then we will go to this example. Now we're gonna have elements that are common and elements that are unique. So two, three, four, five are common, right? So let's actually maybe write them. I'm gonna write them in the same color or in a different color as common elements. So let's say these are blue. And these are unique. So these are common. These are unique to set one. So ideally, you know that like if elements are common, ideally you want to just put them in the one that has space, right? But how do we do that, right? Like ideally you can kind of figure out like, okay, if I have four here and I need five here, the elements I want to get rid of right away are like these common ones. 
and then one more. So let's say this one, and then I'll have a set of like nine elements. So that kind of makes sense. But how do I actually do that? So it's pretty straightforward. What we can actually do is we can split these two sets up, right? This nums one and nums two after we get rid of duplicates into these three sets. So this will be a set, this will be a set, uh, this will be a set, and this will be a set. And once we do that, so let's go back to our previous example. So let's actually do that. Let's split these up into set one, set two. So now set one will be this. Set two will be empty, right? So let's move this over here. So this is, we can label it as well. So uniques one, and then uniques two is completely empty. And this is the common set. Now, basically we can figure out for each set, how big is it and how big does it need to be, right? So for this first set, it is six elements and it needs to be five. So we know, and we don't really care about the numbers, but we know that like, we need to, we need to basically get rid of one number. So if this is length six and we need it to be five, the most it can be is five. And remember this is all unique numbers, right? Cause we made a unique set. So we can write that down for each unique set, calculate how many elements it will contribute, right? And we know that because we started with uh, arrays of length 10, we, we know we need each of these sets to be length five. And it doesn't really matter if it's smaller, right? Like, like if set two was actually all of these duplicate elements, like it doesn't really matter, right? But we, we, we just need to figure out like how small can it possibly be? So the first one, we need it to be length five and it's length six. So this will actually contribute all of its elements, right? We want to contribute all of it. So uniques one, it can't contribute six, but it can contribute five, right? So uniques one will contribute five. What about uniques two? So uniques two is completely empty, right? Because all the elements in there are also in here. So we put this in this common set. So uniques two will have zero, it'll contribute zero elements. Then we basically just figure out after that, like once we have all of our uniques, cause uniques, uniques are the best things to have. Then we figure out like, do we have space for common elements and how much space do we have? So uniques one has zero space and uniques two has five space, right? Because it's completely empty and these are all common. So this has five space left. So because it has five space left and we have four common elements, basically our result will be the amount uniques one can contribute plus amount uniques two can contribute plus leftover space or it's going to be the minimum of the leftover space and the length of common elements right so the idea is just figure out how much extra space do you have once you fill out these two array, these two sets with unique numbers and how many common elements do you have? So in this case, we have four common elements and we have five space left over. So we, we have, we have enough space to put all our common elements in here, right? So then we will return nine because the first thing will contribute five and the second one will contribute zero. And we can also fit all of our common elements in here. So that'll be another four. So we can return nine. And there we go. And we can do one more example of this just to, show, just to show this exactly. So we'll do one more example and then we'll show the code. So I'm just gonna get rid of like, I'm not gonna have duplicate elements in this one because it's pretty obvious that you can just get rid of duplicate elements right away. Or maybe, maybe I'll have some, maybe I'll have some. So let's just say we have the same thing. We have two arrays of length 10. We need to condense them down to length five. And let's say we have like something easy again. So let's just say we have like one, one, two, two, three, three, four, five, six, seven. And then in the second one, maybe we'll have like four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. So remember step one, get rid of all duplicates. So we can get rid of this element. We can get rid of this element. We can get rid of this element. And now we can have this. And in the second one, there are no, uh, there are no duplicates. 
Step two, split this up into two unique arrays and the common elements. So what are all the common elements? The common elements are four, five, six, seven. So we're gonna split that up into its own thing. So four, five, six, seven will be over here, common. Then the elements that are in array one are over here. So this will be like set uniques one. And then uniques two will be everything except for this, right? So here we go. So common, uniques one, and uniques two. Then same thing, we need to figure out how much does each one of these contribute. So this one will contribute three elements. This one can only contribute five, right? And there are six, so we'll just like pretend to get rid of one, doesn't matter which one. Let's say we get rid of this one. This one will contribute five. How much space do we have left over here? Well, we need both of these together to be 10. So we have two space left over right over here. And remember the common elements can go in either one because they were initially present in both of them. So we can just say, just to like show this, we have two more space over here. So we can like throw in these two in there. Oops, let's get rid of this. So this would be like the visual representation, but we don't actually need to throw them in. We just need to calculate it. So here we will have 10 elements, right? But if we had a lot of space, but not enough common elements, we'd have less. Or if we have too many uniques and we can't fit our common elements, we'd have, you know, like less and we couldn't fit all our common elements. But that's kind of the thing. You first get rid of duplicates, then you split them up into two uniques and common elements. You figure out how much space do I, how much extra space do I have in my uniques? And if they are too big, then they can be a maximum of half of whatever, like, if you need to get 10 down to five, then the, the maximum space they can contribute is five. So if you have more unique elements than five, each one will contribute five. Then you figure out how much space is there left over and that's where your common elements go and you you figure out like how, how many common elements can I fit, right? So it's gonna be the minimum of the common elements and the space and the common elements can go in either one because they were initially present in both arrays. So let's take a look at the code. It's pretty straightforward. And there are some useful set functions that we can do here. So let's take a look. So first we have this n, which is how long the array needs to be once we divide it by two, right? Then we have our two sets that will get rid of duplicates for us. Then we'll have our common elements, which is a set intersection. So if you use set one and set two, it will be elements that are present in both sets. And then unique one and unique two, you can do a set difference. So if you do set one minus common, it will be elements that are in set one that aren't in the common elements. And unique two cell elements that are in set two that aren't in the common elements. You could also do this. I think that should work as well. Um, and we can test it. Yeah, that does work. So either one's fine. Uh, you could do either one. It's the same thing. So basically a set difference is elements that are in one set that aren't in the other. Then we get our length of the common elements. Like I said, we don't actually need to transfer. We just need to get our lengths and then we can calculate our result from there. Then we get our lengths of our unique elements. And like I said, the most a, a unique element can, the most a unique uh, set can contribute is half of n, which is this like n number. So we're just gonna take the minimum of length of unique and n. So if length of unique is less than n, it'll contribute less. If length of unique is more than n, it can only contribute n. Then we add them together. And finally, the remaining space is, so we take how, how much each one contributes and then we subtract it from two times n, which is the length of nums originally, right? So we tried to get two arrays of 10 elements here, for example, into two arrays of five elements. So how much total space is there? It's gonna be 10 minus max unique from each, right? 10 minus the total space that they contribute. And then from there, you just take max unique from each and you figure out how many common elements can I actually put into this remaining space, which is just the minimum of the common elements in the remaining space. So if the remaining space is like three, but I have five common elements, I can only fit three. Similarly, if the remaining space is five, but I have only three common elements, I can only fit in three there. So you don't actually need to put them into the sets, but you just need to calculate it. And yeah, then you can run it and it works. So kind of just uh, once you like understand set operations and how to do it, I think it's pretty straightforward. Like you, I think getting rid of duplicates is kind of obvious. And then I think it's also kind of obvious to know that like if elements are in both, Ideally, I want to put them in the set that has more space, right? So if elements are in the, the first and second one, I want to keep them in the one that has extra space and the one that doesn't have extra space, I'll just have all the uniques in. 
So yeah, not too bad. And we can talk about the time and space. So basically all of these operations are essentially O of N, right? To iterate through a set, like this is iterating through a set, this is iterating through a set. And so the set is like N over two, which is O of N. Um, these are all O of one, like this is just basic math. So time is going to be O of N and space is going to be O of N because we did make like, we did make unique sets. We did make common sets. So these unique sets will be worst case, like N over two and so on. So that's O of N space. Um, yeah, so that's going to be all for this problem. Hopefully you liked it. And if you did, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. And then I'll probably do the last video for this contest tomorrow. See how it goes on that one. We have quite a lot today. So hopefully that was helpful. And if you did, like I said, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. And I will be posting the fourth one pretty soon. So thanks for watching.